Is it a struggle? Yes, we have to realize our strengths and our weaknesses. Hi, and welcome to Why Why Not, and I'm your host, Janice. We're interviewing inspiring guests on inspirational topics that will motivate you to help you reach your goals and get you from ordinary to extraordinary. Welcome back. Today our show topic is women in journalism. And we actually have a woman in journalism, her name is Marlene Cook, who's been in the business for over 50 years, half a century. And I'd like to welcome her to the show and she's gonna talk to us about women in journalism, ins and outs, what's going on in the industry, and what it was like starting years ago. Okay? Let's welcome her. Hi, Marlene. How are you? Hi, Janice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I thought about it, I'm like half a century. Maybe I shouldn't have set the century part to it. Oh, well, kind of like, whoa, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Five decades or two scores ago plus 10 years. Yeah, something it. like that, yeah. So, long time anyway. Long time. So you have been in journalism almost 50 years. Yes. It has over, been 50. over 50 years. Yeah. Over 50 years. Now let's start with a simple question. Why journalism? Why back then when it was predominantly male-dominated when it came to journalism? Well, you know, I really never thought about that at the time. I never thought I would be a journalist. Uh, really? Because the way I started out, I just kind of crept in under the door, I think. Uh, I was on a bowling league on a Tuesday morning, with, and I had my kids are in school, except the youngest mm -hmm. one, and I had him in the nursery. But as I was bowling, this one woman was there who was writing a gossip column for the um, Harvey Tribune. Okay. Now, back then, what was happening is that women were pretty much confined to doing cooking, uh, weddings, uh, you know, okay. gossip columns, that mm -hmm. type of thing. They didn't do any real hard news. Okay. But anyway, she was doing this gossip column, and she came to me the one day, and she said, Marlene, I'm leaving the state. I'm moving. And she says, why don't you take over my column? And I went, why would I do that? I'm not a writer. Oh. And she said, well, you've been writing my column for over a year. And the thing that I was doing, because I was with the kids, I had PTA, Scouts, baseball, uh, I was active in the church. And so I was giving her all of the news from the people that I was, you know, that I knew, mm -hmm. you know, okay. all the weddings, the showers, the mm -hmm. people that were sick and uh, vacations, that kind of stuff. So you knew everything in the neighborhood. Yes, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. And I would give her all of this information. Oh, wow. So I wasn't looking at that. I was just looking at giving her information and helping some of the people that wanted to be in the paper. Mm -hmm. And so I went, oh, I didn't realize that. So I said, well, why not? I, you know, I'll okay. try. Okay. Why, why not? Yeah. <laughs> why, why not? And so I went to uh, see the uh, editor. Okay. And... He said, well, you know, well, we could start something like this. again. We could continue this. He says, you won't have much in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But he didn't know I was already giving her all the information. information. Wow. And so he says to me, do you have a typewriter? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, he didn't, he never asked me if I knew how to type. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know how to type? So slightly. Slightly. <laughs> So, I mean, I was one finger typing. Oh, okay. And I wasn't a journalist, so I really had to learn from scratch. And I was already in my, I was 30 years old by the time I did this. Okay, so, so I was, about the 70s. I was a late bloomer. It was 1973 okay. or 1970s when I started writing, you know, that. Okay. And I, uh, Vernita Gowans was the women's editor at the, at the, uh, the, the Harvey Tribune. Oh, Harvey Tribune. And she said to Alec Kerr, who was the editor, uh, oh, give the kid a chance. 
well, I wasn't a kid anymore, but it was mm-hmm. okay. I mm-hmm. thought it was fun. <laughs> and so then he hired me. And so he says, you won't have very much to begin with. Well, I ended up giving him a lot more than he thought. And in order to figure out what newspaper was all about, I would take the paper and my column, which was called uh, The Tattler. The Tattler. The Tattler. Okay. And I would read what I sent to them. I made carbon copies. Now, they didn't hear. It was carbon copies. Right. They used to have the carbon. You had to put the little sheet in between. Yeah, the pink sheet. You get your ink ink all over your fingers. Well, I would go and read that and compare notes to how it was edited. Oh, okay. And that's how I learned newspaper style. So you didn't go to school? I did not. No, I graduated from high school, and I did what... What every young graduate supposed to do from high school, got married and had kids. Okay. That's what we were supposed to be doing. We yeah. didn't think of career. And did, the ones that went to college at the time were looking for an MRS degree, a husband. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was, you know, and I didn't have to look too far. I didn't have to go to college to find my husband. I already had my boyfriend. <laughs> so was, from high school. Yeah, right okay. from high school. So is it now, do women kind of go to journalism? Do you have to, you think? I think that you have to have a degree now in something. Okay. They they want you to have a degree. I don't think that I could have come into this the way I did today. I don't Mm -hmm. think that would have worked. Okay. Uh, Because I just kind of fell into it. I had no idea that's what I would do. I remember. It was an opportunity that just popped in your lap, and it was like, yes. Yes, and took it. You know, and I, I can remember in school, uh, one of the teachers would say, you know, you have to stop and re- re- analyze what you want to do. What do you want to be? Right. You know, what do you want to be doing five years from now, 10 years from now, mm-hmm. 20 years from now? And I'm going, I don't know. I have no clue what I want to do then. So I didn't, I thought that was foolish. What are you going to do? I mean, if I'm going down this road and there comes an opportunity you know, then I make a decision. Do I go that way or do I stay on the road I'm on? Now, what made you decide to do that? Were you inspired? I mean, even God or your husband or just? No, I just, no, it just happened. It just happened. I wasn't inspired. You saw that at opportunity that time. Yeah. and you went with it. Yeah, I just took that curve in the road and dealt with that afterwards. So I put the cart before the horse. Okay. I got the job before I learned what it was all about. Okay. <laughs> so, but six months later, I was offered a full-time job. Oh, wow. So I thought, oh, I must be doing something right. Mm-hmm. And so then I started writing. I, I, in addition to that gossip that was at the beginning of this column, I started writing things about what my kids were doing. Uh, it was kind of like an Irma Bombeck column. Okay, and so kind of like a, a early blog, kind of in the well, sense. yeah, sort of. Or and I would just blog. write about what the kids, you know, mm-hmm. what they did or what anybody that I knew did, and okay. I would write kind of a humor. Oh, a humor column. Kind of, okay, you know, it was like a humor column, and uh, that's so why I said, "Well, I'm really tattling now," so they, you know, kept the name the tattler, <laughs> and uh, so that kept going, and I I started with. Uh, uh, just added it and they took it and they didn't say anything about what I was doing. They didn't tell me yes or no. Yes or no. They just printed what and you got. They just, whatever I gave them, they printed. And I was all, yeah, okay, this is good. Mm-hmm. And then Vernita Gowans invited me to join the Illinois Women's Press Association. Okay. And so I went with her to a meeting and they treated me like I was a professional, not a wannabe writer. Oh, wow. And I I mean, I was still thinking of myself as a wannabe. Mm -hmm. And they treated me like I was, I was already a a writer. I was a journalist. And it went, it worked out really well. And then I started doing a little bit more and more. Then they asked me to start covering entertainment. Mm -hmm. So I started covering shows, going to different shows all the time and writing reviews. Wow. I did take courses at school. I went to oh, school then. Okay. I, I did. I went to Calumet College. Uh, and then I, I went to Thornton uh, Community College, which is now South Suburban. South Suburban College, right. And uh, NFPW had their conferences once a year. 
and I started going with Vernita to the conferences. And at that time, they would um, partner with a college or a university for CEUs, the Continuing Education Units. Okay. And so I would go to every one of those. I would go to every workshop, everything that they had that I could get these things. So I have all these CEUs from colleges and universities over the whole United States. Focusing on journalism and anything yes. that would and apply it was all to journalism. your articles. All right. journalism. Okay. Yeah. And so, I, I mean, I had a lot of, a lot of training, nothing. So like you yeah. said, you threw the horse before the cart because you got the job. And it's like, well, now I need to figure out how to write. Right. And exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Expand my craft and increase it. Right. Better, right. Okay. Yeah. And so I just kept on growing and, and doing more and more. Then mm -hmm. I got to do some travel writing. Okay. So I was, I, I had never thought I would travel anywhere, you know, because I, Hated geography. I didn't know what state came next on a highway. I didn't know. And now I'm traveling all over, and I I have now gone to 50, all 50 states and 17 countries. Oh, wow. So, I mean, it's like, I never planned any of this. And then with your article for that, was it still the Tatler, or did you change the... No, then I, I did, uh, that was just a features. And that oh, was those just, are features. Those are features. So you did the column so, and features. Right, now, and then you, I did another column that was called Front and Center when I started doing the entertainment. Okay. And so that was all just all about entertainment. Mm -hmm. And it was local entertainment. And I, But I got to meet a lot of celebrities because of doing all these other shows, and I would do interviews. And so I, I got to know a lot of celebrities, and I've got pictures with all of these because um, Drury Lane used to have, you know, celebrities at their, their shows. Right. And I covered every one of those. And when it was intermission, you'd go back to Tony DeSantis's apartment, and there would be waitresses dressed in, like, French Costumes. I mean, mm -hmm. the, you know, French waitresses. He would do like an after party for yeah, the show was, or for yeah, the it performers. In, yes, it was in the at the intermission and at the end. Oh, okay. And they would be going around with trays of, of, of champagne or or whatever, <laughs> you know. And I'm like, I have really arrived. <laughs> Uh, this is awesome. Look what I'm doing. Now, who's the most famous or your favorite celebrity that you've interviewed since you've done entertainment? Oh, my, the favorite. Danny Thomas was a good one. Uh, I, I like. Oh, Danny Thomas. It was one in the beginning. And, and how that, why I, I picked that is because in the beginning, the first person that I uh, interviewed was set up by Tom Dreesen, the comedian. Okay. And he was going to be at Mr. Kelly's in Chicago on Rush Street. Okay, I think I know where that's at. And Del Reese was going to be there. He was opening for Del Reese. Oh, wow. Wow. And so I he set up this thing for with Del Reese. And I'm going there. And I didn't, I mean, I, I like Del Reese's music. And I saw her on, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the shows that she was on every once in a while. So I knew who she was, but I didn't know much about her. Mm-hmm. And when I got there, she was answering any of the questions I had with yes, no. Wow. And it was like, oh, where am I going with this? <laughs> I'm really going to have to be a creative writer on this one right. because I'm getting nowhere. Wow. Turned out that she had been, uh, someone was, did a review on her show, and it was he was from the Chicago Tribune. And he didn't talk about her show. He talked about her gaining weight, oh. talked about her hair, talked about everything. Just criticized her. It, it, he criticized her for things, and so she was burned out by this. So she was not going to talk to anybody, but mm. she was doing it as a favor to Tom. So she did, and but she was horrible to interview, just horrible. So now I'm, I'm, I'm like, didn't know where to go with this, so I said to her, Tom had told me she had a daughter, and her daughter was a teenager, and her name was Dumpsey. 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 Okay. So, yeah, I know it was kind of a, a different name. Right. And so I decided to ask about Dumpsey, and I asked a question that I probably shouldn't have. Oh. Well. <laughs> yeah, you're fresh on your face. <laughs> yeah. The, the question was, well, is Dumpsey dating? And she went, oh, oh. Oh my God! Oh, oh, she's but a baby. Of course she's not. And I went, oh, 
I'm sorry. I, I was dating at 13. I thought everybody did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to get out of that one. Oh, wow. So I, I got a short she story. She was your most difficult yeah, one. Yeah, she was the most difficult. And your favorite was Danny Thomas. And so the next one was going to be Danny Thomas at a press conference. Oh, a press conference. And I thought, well, I'll be okay because everybody else will be asking the questions. Right. It'll be a room. A press conference has a bunch of um, journalism. Yeah. yeah. yeah everybody else would ask a question. Right. I just listen. All right. Okay. And then I thought, you know, I can't take a chance on that. I better find out more about him. So... Didn't have a computer at that time. So I had to go to the library to look up everything about research. Danny Thomas. Mm -hmm. And I spent half a day. And he found at St. Jude's Hospital. Uh, yes. Yes, people don't know because a lot of young people may not know Danny Thomas, but they've heard of St. Jude's Hospital. Correct. Right. Correct, yes. And he was found it, and his daughter, Marla, I have yeah. since interviewed her too. Oh, wow. Yeah, but uh, Anyway, I knew everything about him, and I read every story there was that was printed about him. And so when I went there, I was totally prepared. Well, you know, I, I discovered that a lot of the celebrities, everybody knows what questions, he knows what We're questions. Gonna ask, yeah, right. yeah, they know what questions you're going to ask. And it's all pretty stock answers. But I had read that he was so depressed at one time that he was standing at a bridge and ready mm -hmm. to jump over, over, over the... Mm -hmm get real and jump into the water and he was going to end everything so I said to him tell me something when you were on that bridge would you really have jumped and he went you know about that and I said yes and wow. he went wow now it became a conversation between him and I and all the other journalists were listening to us wow now is that Getting into journalism and talking about that now, is that something like a key point you should do? Like something to catch their attention so now it's drawn to you? Do your homework. Do your homework and know about the person and find out something uh, about that person that mm -hmm. maybe other journalists are not going to ask. They're not going to ask. Okay. So that's that was my theory after that. Now, when you asked a question like that, is that something that maybe would have been offensive, though? Or, I mean, because that was a shocker. I would think, like, he had no clue you even knew about that. Right. So you took him off guard. I did. And that's what I tried to do with every interview that I did. So oh, you, would, that's one of your techniques. That's one of my... That's, yeah. That's, <laughs> Good thing I'm doing the interview instead of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the thing that, you know, yeah. because I, I would, I, I studied everyone before I knew about who I was mm -hmm. going to meet, you know, but mm -hmm. sometimes I didn't know okay. who I was going to meet. Wow. Because I was the only one in the office when Gwendolyn Brooks was coming to Thornton High School. Oh, wow. And you got to interview her too. And they sent me, it's, that was supposed to be at a press conference too. And I said, I don't even know who Gwendolyn Brooks is. You know, I, I don't know anything about her. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's a press conference. Just go. Just go. Because that was way back then. So okay, I went. So she would have been newer at the time and not a lot of people knew about her. Right. Then. Well, okay. I bet everybody else knew who she was. I just didn't. Oh. Okay. I didn't get into poetry. I didn't know that's oh, what she did. Right. And I, I was so dumb, I didn't even know what a poet laureate was. Because she was poet laureate of Illinois. Right. And I went there. And we had a little bit of small talk, and it turned out there was no one else there. Oh, my God. No Only me. Wow. And I sat there. We made a little small talk and so forth, and she knew I was dumb. She knew I didn't know a thing. And But we, you know, she, she kind of led me a little bit. Yeah. And then one of the students who was on the, the, the school paper mm -hmm. came down, and he was madly in love with her. Yeah. He knew her work. And I went, saved by the bell, saved by a high school kid. <laughs> it was <laughs> wonderful. Uh, and he started asking questions. Hmm. And, and I said to her, I said, you know, I said, I have to tell you, I do not know your jargon. I do not know your poetry, nor do I understand some of your poetry. Hmm. And she says, aha. Now we're going to get someplace. When you admit you don't know something, you can learn. And now we have someplace to start. Wow. 
So I, I, I've never forgotten that. Mm. I've never forgotten that because she really called me and it, and then she was fine after that. Mm. And she was fine after that and, we, we, and then we could talk and she taught me and yeah. we were, you know, so I could write a story. Oh, I, I can understand with you because I'm not a poet. I don't like poetry typically. So yeah. that's something like I would not have known either a lot of her yeah, information. Well, since I've read some of her stuff and I yeah. still have to say I don't always understand what she's writing about. You know, because she's kind of militant mm. in some of her writing, and she kind of like is a little bit like Giovanni. Okay. Which now, don't I sound smart after this? <laughs> <laughs> she taught you well. Yeah, but anyway, so, and again, you know, the uh, IWPA people and and NFPW people have really taken me on as 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 a real journalist. Okay. And. It was a tough. It was a tough road to get there, mm -hmm. because I didn't. I didn't know anything. I started from scratch. Now, do you still think it's a reasonable career to get into journalism? I think you have to have a passion for it. Okay. Because number one, it's not the best paying career. Oh yeah. I mean, a lot of freelance writers. There's a lot of freelance writers, and you a lot know, of newspapers are gone under and over the, the years. And, and newspapers are closing their their newsrooms. There's hardly newsrooms to go to anymore. Okay. Uh, where I worked in a whole big newsroom with everybody there, and you had people to bounce ideas off of. Right. Now you're pretty much on your own hmm. uh, on a lot of things. Uh, everything's done by email or by Zoom in order to even get your assignments. Right, especially after COVID now, a lot of right. the newsrooms closed down right away, so you didn't have, hey, I'm working on a news article, yep. and you've interviewed this person before. You didn't have that communication a lot. No, nope. I, I traveled all over to, to, to these people wherever they were, you know, to, to get there. Mm. And But you have to have a passion for it, you know, and here I am, I'm, I'm going to be 79 years old in June, and I'm still working, I'm still writing. You said 79. I'm no, 89. <laughs> Oh, I make myself younger. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next year, I'm going to be 90, so yes. I'm, I'm skipping that whole 10 years in between, I guess. But anyway, I'm still writing for a mm -hmm. newspaper, uh, which now is a digital paper. Okay. So I've come a long way. Now, besides writing for a paper in journalism, which is very important, a um, couple things. Have you ever been on, like, the street scenes, or you've been more of a column and more reserved for your writing versus on the scene location, maybe? Uh, I've done, you know, some, you know, on uh, because of, of theater that mm -hmm. I would, okay. you know, for that. But no, I was entertainment most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I did only one news story, and that's when uh, the uh, Dalton uh, Public Works garage burned. Oh, okay. And uh, my son worked for the village at the time in Public Works. Okay. And I was again sent there because I was the only one left at the office. Everybody was off on assignment. And so I was sent to cover it, and I said, I will do that, but I first have to make sure my son is okay. Mm -hmm. And I did that, and then I got to do the story, but I knew everybody that worked there because my son worked there. Did you like that feeling of doing, like, a news? Uh, yeah, it was kind of fun. And I guess now I could write about just about anything that, okay. you know, you, you tell me to write a story, and I'm doing research like these stories that I'm doing now, I'm writing history features. Okay. I didn't grow up in Lansing. I don't know any of the history of Lansing. Mm -hmm. So when they give me assignment of a place, I have to do a lot of research. So it's, so I'm saying it's not paid so, much, you know. I, when getting into journalism, you should keep a broad spectrum. Absolutely. Don't just focus on one thing. No. Okay, so no. do entertainment, you can do a column, you can but do... if you're a writer, news. you know, if you can write... You, you can write just about anything. About anything. Because you're going to do your, your interviews, you're going to do your research, you're going to do what has to be done mm -hmm. to gather the information you need to make a story. Okay. And, you know, so you have to be able to do just about anything that comes along. And then from that point, your journalism, you've actually did a couple books also, correct? Yes, I did. Okay. They were... and. This is another thing that happens. I'm doing history. I did history book. Uh, Dalton, it was called um, The Tadler Fact Fiction and Folklore. Okay. About the history of Dalton. And now I'm doing history on 
Lansing, the features on, on Lansing locations. Uh, I wrote uh, a history on the cemeteries. Cemeteries. And I, and I hated history in school. Oh, and you hated history. I did not like history. So when you're a good writer, you can write about anything if you like it or not. Yep. Okay. Yep. You use the same tools. <laughs> what type of tips will you give people? We only have a few more minutes. What type okay. of tips will you give to women who want to go into journalism or even teenagers right now? We have a lot of tools that have their papers still yes. and kids are still dabbling in that. Do you yes. recommend it? What tips would you give them? I, I and Follow your heart. Follow your passion. Mm. If, if you've got to want to do that, because if you're looking for a high paying job, that's not it. If you're looking for a newsroom, they're not there. You have to be a self starter. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be able to know how to research. Okay. Um, so it's different. It's totally different than what I grew up with. What I, you know, what I came in, when I came in, it was, yeah, you went to the library, you didn't have what you have today. Right. Today is the, the availability of the yeah. internet and technology. Yeah. You had to go to the, you know, you had to physically go to the library and get a book. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and now you, it, you know, you hold your phone up and you say a name and you get all everything you ever wanted to know about that person. Right. So it's much easier that way. But you're still alone. You don't have that other person to bounce things off of anymore. Mm -hmm. um, if it were, if I, if I were young today, I'm not sure I would be doing what I'm doing now. Really? Okay. I don't know. I don't know what I would be doing. Mm -hmm. You know, again, depending on where the road takes me, and that's where I'm still at. I opportunity. Right. Because right. there are more opportunities now than it was back then. Yeah. Okay. Now. Would you still recommend people going to school and how would you recommend like them starting like journals or something like that in high school to get that writing feeling? Yes, I would very much so. I think you have to be, you have to, you know, go to school for that. I think mm -hmm. you have to be, I think you have to take journalism to know the basics and to know newspaper style. Okay. Uh, so that, you know, if you, when you apply for a job, you, you can, you can go like, um, I have a cousin who just graduated from um, Medell um, School of Journalism at Northwestern. She is now in Washington D.C. and she's writing political stories. Oh wow! And so she's she just went straight up, but she had the gumption. You have to have you have to have a drive to get there. Okay. So if you don't have a drive. It's just not going to, you don't fall into it like I did. Mm -hmm. You have to, you have you to, have to have the drive, the motivation. Yeah. And typically I would think it probably would start sometimes in like high school, the high school papers, the ones wanting to know that information that's out there. Right. Or someone wanting to know everyone's information. The whole neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. And that's the reason why we have the high school um, contest, uh, writers right. contest for my WPA. And, you know, and we had, Good response from them. Good. So and kids are kids, still at least interested. The kids are still interested, and they're smart. Mm -hmm. They're very smart. They're and a lot smarter should, starting out than I was. Yeah. <laughs> and kids should probably definitely focus on English classes yes. and learning their writing styles. Their grammar. Grammar. Punctuation. Yes. they got to know all of that. One last tip, one fast tip to tell people if they're starting off at the age of 30 like you were, do they do it, don't, or what do they do? I think, yeah, again, you have to, you know, if, if you've got the, the gumption to do it, mm -hmm. I mean, I jumped in with both feet and, and I mean, I, I jumped into hot water not knowing how to swim. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, and I don't know that that could happen today. Okay. I think that you have to take a path through the journalism uh, studies and so forth. I think you need that path now. To get into to it. To get into to it. To break in the industry. Right. I okay. don't think you can just fall into it like I did. Okay, well, that's we're all out of time. Um, I want to thank you, Marlene Cook, for thank over you. 50 years of journalism. Thank you. And coming here today to talk about it and share your experiences with us. Uh, this is Why, Why Not? Your host, Janice, we were talking about today about journalism and women in journalism. And we hope if you are inspired or motivated that you seek um, a college, a counselor at school to get more information on journalism okay thank you very much like us on facebook and youtube we're why why not and have a nice evening bye bye <laughs>